This episode is sponsored by Shutterstock.com. With over 20 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off, head on over to Shutterstock.com and use offer code GAMEBREAKER7. This episode is also brought to you by Audible. For a free 30-day trial and to receive a free audiobook, just head on over to audible.com slash GameBreaker. GameBreaker TV. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to whatever. What is this? The Republic. <laughs> That's right. Episode 148 for July 29, 2013. If you're here for the live show, you know what I'm laughing at. If you're not, I'm sorry. I'm laughing at inside jokes. You should show up. Oh, <laughs> we have so much news to talk about today. It's just packed to the brim. There's so much. No, there's not. So you just want to turn it off now. Go right ahead. <laughs> all right. Waiting in line is back. The class rep system is fully unveiled. All that more. But first, from Massive.com, it's Mr. Larry Everett. How are you, sir? Are you uh, vegan? I'm doing good. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. And I don't want to be vegan. And no. joining us, as always, Laura Williams. Are you vegan? I am not vegan. I oh. love meat way too much. Oh, and Larry, so last week, I see your Darth Vader, and I raise you Jawa plushie. Oh, snap. They've got a, <laughs> yeah. they've got a geek-a-thon going over here. I see your Jawa plushie, and... And it lights up, and it talks. And raise you... <laughs> oh, no! No! no Give it away! You win, you win, you win! <laughs> Boom! I won! <laughs> <laughs> Gotta come up to the live show. I think I've steep gone to a new low this week. I think I did that did that go across the line in pre-show finally? That video just it was, it was very awkward. I yeah. kind of sat there and it's one of That's those things where you're like you're not really sure what to look at. That doesn't even really go into the weirdness <laughs> of YouTube. I kinda hold back on some of those. I kinda took a chance today with that one, so I don't know. That's the internet the is a scary, scary place. Or it's great. <laughs> when, when, did, when did you ever? You couldn't get entertainment like this, like ever before. If the when the internet wasn't around, you would never have seen that guy. It's true. God, is that guy scary? Look at the. It's like a serial killer basement. It's like, who thinks of that? Like, I, I. Okay. <laughs> uh let's start the show off. Uh, what do you guys want to talk about? Anything? Anything particular? Anything? Anything? Two point three. Two point three. Hmm. hmm? We did the new yeah. flash points. Yes. yes, let's hear about fun. them. Let's hear about the new flashpoints. Can you really do them without the Trinity? How do they work? Uh, it's kind of, well, the story mode is very similar to how uh, Black Talon or the Essels work, where you only need two people. Um, Larry and I did it on uh, my sniper and his marauder, and we both had our healing pets out and just used that. Through areas where you've got boss fights, they have little um, cultal healing stations. So if you really get in trouble, you can click on that and it drops a, a, a pretty substantial hot on uh, the party so that you can go and, and keep going. And obviously you can do it with four people. But uh, really, I agree with Larry. Like, I think if you're pretty decently geared uh, at this point, you could solo that with a yeah. pet. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, I, we, it was short. We've gone through it and yeah, it was, it was pretty short, uh, generally speaking. There's two of them, though. Uh, and... Um, we were running through it, and we were just like, uh, on the boss fights. Now, this is just now. Bear in mind that this is just the story mode version of it. The story mode version of it on the boss fight. There's like this one. Uh, he electrocute one of the bosses. Electrocutes the water. I had the, I had some issues with particle effects, uh, and so, so I couldn't see any of the particle effects. But I was standing there in this water while I was being electrocuted. It wasn't really hurting me. So. So, I mean, like, you should probably move out of that. And he's like, oh, what? I can't see what I'm standing what? in. He's like, we're not taking any damage. And I'm like, well, you're getting the electrocuted debuff, so you should probably move out of that. 
Stand yeah. out of the electricity, idea. Larry. Larry out. That's, yeah. Are there any? It, uh, were, were there any other special mechanics uh, that kind of help out? For you know, if you don't have one of the roles for the Trinity. Well, like the um, uh, as Lord just mentioned, there was those those culto things that pop that are sitting there. In usually in like the boss fight areas, were they in any other areas? I think they were just in the boss fight areas. Uh, just in the boss fight areas. Yeah. There's these little stations that we found out later are not in the hard mode version of it. Uh, that just you click on them and they hit what it was like four thousand right up front, and then it ticked a little bit after it's that. Like two k after that yeah. for six seconds. Yeah. So it's pretty. It's pretty decent. They did it. I, I think that that's it's and that's an interesting way to do it. I don't think I've ever seen anything specifically like that before, where it's a mm -hmm. uh, a group wide hot. Uh, from a station, and it's it's pretty it's pretty good. I think that's so what cool. do you but what do you well, um, what do you group, what do you guys think of the oh. hard mode? What's that, Laura? Oh, I was gonna say if you're running through with four DPS, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, to have that there. What do you guys think of the hard mode versions? Are they fun? They were fun. Um, the first one, the laboratory, uh, there wasn't really any special mechanic except towards the end they have two mobs that you can use to um hold them together and they blow each other up and there was purple splooge all over the place and so that was kind of a neat mechanic and really the only thing that sort of took a little figuring out everything else you just pretty much could uh plow through you know yeah that mechanic that mechanic was funny we went with uh, uh tenebrous from mox um and and he was he was our tank for us, and he says because you see these these guys and you got to match them up, and when you match them up, they explode. So he's like, "Why don't we just let them all loose at one time and let them kill each other?" <laughs> so, <laughs> which okay, sure, that makes a lot of sense. Let's do it. So we so we like opened every container in the entire <laughs> room. <laughs> Wipe this out flat. It was hilarious. <laughs> so uh, don't. Pro tip, don't, don't open, open all the containers at once. Oh, time. yes, chat room. I love purple splooge. Love it. How, um... Mm. <laughs> where's this going? <laughs> uh, That's why the show is 18 and up. What do you guys think? I mean, what do you guys think about for the average player? Are they going to be challenging enough for the average player? Um, I think that the, the Zerka Labs... Well, I don't think any of the, the story modes are challenging really at all. I mean, that's everybody should be able to plow through that without a problem. Um, the hard mode, uh, I feel like this, the labs is going to be a lot easier for pugs than the uh, core meltdown. That yeah. seemed a little bit more challenging. There's a, there are um, the boss mechanics in the, the core meltdown one. Like, for instance, you got to drag a... You gotta, I mean, the, really, as far as raid level stuff is concerned it's not that difficult but for flash points it kind of is because you get it you gotta uh you gotta drag one of the bosses over to uh, a flashing container and have the boss smash that that's one of the mechanics you also have there's another one where you got to drag a boss around and make sure that he constantly has this debuff on him and then uh the last one uh, just you know you've got the average don't stand in the purple reticles, or actually, I guess they're blue in this in this case. Yeah, um, don't, stand in, don't yeah. stand in blue lightning. That's bad. Don't stand in blue lightning. That's bad. You get, there is there is a little bit of movement involved in the, uh, but I think that, I I I think that it's it, it, and when it first comes out, it's going to be a little bit a little bit challenging for pugs. But after you know after a little, just like any other flashpoint that's out there, once uh, people get used to it, it'll it'll become second nature to them. Now I know, I know Larry, that everybody. There's that one broken. There's that one broken bridge part. <laughs> that, one <broken laughs> that we both part. fell through. <laughs> don't. I know. <laughs> don't die to the bridge boss. Don't die to the bridge boss. If you do, tweet me about it, and I will make fun of you for the rest of the day. Just. just don't saying. die to the bridge boss. Don't uh, something else is going boss. on. There's new da there's new dailies, right? I know everybody's excited for these fun, fun, fun dailies. Are they fun? I heard they're fun. I heard dailies are fun. Yes, there's dailies, they're so they're really fun. Fast. In fact, they're are even they faster than Illum. They are fast. Faster than Illum. And fun. Uh, so how do they, they compare to the existing? Up, and you have to kill a tentacle monster. 
Who doesn't love killing tentacle monsters? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> vegans. <laughs> vegans. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to... I'm actually... I have this like running thing on the hyperspace beacon where uh, called uh, called easy money where basically I figure out the just the ways in the in within the game mechanics without crafting without you know playing the GTN and that sort of thing what some of the best ways to get money is just in the game itself and I'm thinking that this is going to be one of the ones at the top if not the top one at this point because I'm as you get used to the mechanics just like uh, with with Ilum, like Ilum, we could, you could run in like 15, 20 minutes, and and have uh, you know what is what is Ilum? Is it is it eighty thousand or ninety thousand something like that uh, credits? And this one is approximately the same. In fact, I think it's more money, and in just in at least the same amount of time, if not less time, than Ilum. And so it's definitely. If you're looking for a way to make money just through combat without doing GTN stuff, when 2.3 comes out, that that's going to be the, your dailies right there, the ones you're going to want to run. Laura, are you going to be doing them regularly? Uh, probably until I get all of the rep with the acquisitions ordinance, and then I'll probably stop unless I really just feel a need for cash. I heard you got a little pet this week. I did. Treek. Oh, yes, the Ewok. I love the Ewok. Larry, you're such a dick. <laughs> why are you, you were very excited about Treek, the little Ewok. Tell us about it. Tell it. With why? Why? Is it, why? Oh, my why? gosh. It, I can say right now, if you are leveling a character, it is absolutely going to be worth the million credits that you spend on it or the cartel market or whatever. Get this character. Um, one, it starts with a almost complete set of gear. The only thing that they don't give you are an earpiece and implants. Um, now the gear that you get is level 10, but it's all orange and it's all moddable. Yes, I absolutely think that it is better than HK. Absolutely, just because it's so hard to get droid parts to level up with. Boom, she said and it better than HK. When you put it in healing stance, she blows sparkly kissy hearts at you. It's adorable. It is so adorable. And if you put her in tank stance, she turns into a redneck and shoots her bowcaster up in the air. You're pretty excited about Tree. I am super excited about it. That's why we brought it up. She's very excited. <laughs> <laughs> I, li I, like, I like the tank stance because she throws bees. Mm. It's hilarious. <laughs> she throws a big bee, like a beehive, at the enemy, and bees buzz around. It's kind of funny. And you see the hive. All right, let's start. I want to. Treek is very, very, very exciting. The Ewok. But I want to <laughs> talk about something. I want to talk about something that's really important. And I want to follow up on Space Garage. Is it still called Space Garage? Uh, so far, right now, it's still called yes. Space Garage. Actually, it's probably going to end up being like orbital station or a hangar bay. I, Any, I really, really hope it's with something else. Orbital station. Because there be are so no garages. Garage. Orbital Star space Wars. station with poop on a stick would be better. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But. Uh, all right, next up, the Gree are back. Uh, apparently, we're waiting in line once again. How's that going for you guys? Are you guys griefing it up over in the Ilum? Oh, yeah. I wish I'd, we didn't get an opportunity to grief it up, but oh my no gosh, griefing. that would have been so fun. There, it, it's, Is the it's same really stupid problem people, of griefing and horrible game design, or what? It, people are still, uh, especially on our server, it, are still just not attacking each other. I went through, um, I went through, I was shooting a video that, that's coming up soon, um, and I went through that area while the Gree event was going on, I passed, I don't know, six people at least that were flagged for PvP. Just None hanging. of them attacked me. They're just, so they just None hang. They're just like, they're all courteous and, and. Yeah, they, they ushered me through. They've given up. <laughs> Please, They've given go up. on. They've given up. The war is over. They've totally just thrown up the flag and just been like, we're done. 
this place sucks and it's done. Is that really what's going on? Uh, well, uh, Cosmic Engine actually is saying in uh, in chat room that uh, people grief on on his server, and they do. I mean, there is some going on, but the thing is that what people have come to come to realize that if there is griefers on your particular instance of of Ilum, switch instances, and you will find you know, or go to the instance with the least amount of people. Boom. What no about grief. achievements? It's any achieve any achievements? Any fun ones? They um yeah, there's right. the achievement to blow people up. Well, to hunt people down and kill them while they're carrying the uh, glowy spheres, and uh, I think there's another one to blow them up at the pylon. Hmm. Uh, on the plus side, there's uh there's a new mount. Seriously, Bioware must have must have just hired the big guns to come in just to name things. There must I, I'm pretty sure there's like an person just appointed for naming conventions because he's knocking it out of the park um knocking it out this is this is the red sphere transport enclosure vehicle it looks just like the blue one you can park you it can in your space garage Greve. yeah from space garage red can i say this again this is called red sphere, red sphere transport enclosure vehicle Okay. Yep. Bad names are really bad. What's up with the bad names? This is like two weeks in a row. It's a terrible name. Why did they just they call it Red Sphere? They have interns name them. All right. Interns? Have, oh, is interns. that what it is? They're like running, running, it's, give contests, like right. name, name a terrible right. vehicle, like <laughs> pick yeah, a name yeah. out of a hat. Who thinks that's a good name? Just call it Red Sphere or something. Like just chop it off there. Red Sphere. sphere. I can't even say it. I can't even say it. I can't even say it. I don't want to say it. Another great name. I'm not sure what it is. It doesn't <laughs> look really that bad. Or there, like that. look, look. Meep Meep it has uh, the perfect name. Glowy, Glowy red, red chair, chair of torture. torture. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> they should totally change it to that. Give me. I'm getting. Credit. I'm getting names out of the chat room, and they're all better. Blood sphere. Blood sphere. Crimson sphere Death fear. Star. Spiro fear. Spiro. Oh, I can't say. It. <laughs> Our charm just came up with like nine better names than what Bioware spent probably months coming up with. Um, Crimson Rider. I'm not sure how comfortable it is, but it's kind of, I guess it's kind of cool. It's okay. I'm kind of indifferent on this one. It's kind of goofy, but it's kind of okay, I guess. I yeah, it's not. I don't, I don't know. It just, I, to be perfectly honest, there's a lot of, of the speeders that just do not look comfortable to ride. And this happens. Apparently, to be they one don't of believe in sitting down. Nah. Yeah. When you're driving over long distances. Nah. Just put some pixels out. Put some pixels in the pewter. They'll spend some money on it. We need more pixels in the pewter. Put it up on the That's store. Right. They'll buy it. Don't worry about it. Who cares? Who cares? Just we don't need a name. Call Red Sphere Transport Vehicle of Doom Death and Body Out of Shit Face. Done. <laughs> Gold. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the class rep system. There's a little bit more information about the class rep situation going on. Um, what's the schedule looking like uh, for when we'll actually be getting from answers from Bioware about this on the class rep situation? Anything? Uh, well, it looks like the first questions are going to be starting uh, August 2nd with Sniper and Sentinel. will be uh, going first to ask their three questions for class. Followed, what is that like? Two weeks later, by Sorcerer and Vanguard on the 16th. And then two weeks after that, Scoundrel and Juggernaut on the 30th. And then Shadow and Mercenary. And then it goes down through November. Wow. So some so players are actually going to be waiting months for answers on their class, aren't they? Well, so, not not exactly. Because, the, because there's mirrors. And the classes are mirrored. And so, you know, uh, in... Like, for instance... Uh, You've got uh, Sniper and uh, Sentinel right up front on uh, August 2nd, and then Gunslinger and Marauder, which are the mirrors of that, uh, on uh, September 27th. So that's, yeah, it starts repeating after two months. Is it that hard? I'm just kind of like, is it really that difficult to answer like two or three questions for every class once a month? It just seems doable. Well, they want to take a week to answer the questions after they've been posted. Yeah, I th I think what it yeah oh gosh it's it's another one of those those things where 
You say the wrong thing, and it's just going to go to Months the Months later. I mean, it's really going to go. On the forums. You really I mean, yeah. you think, it's, you think it's that much of just, like, talking about and, and formulating the answers? Because I find it oh, funny. I'm like sure. with so, I'm, I'm kind of finding it funny with some companies, like, being backed into that market, and then you've got other companies like, uh, I don't know, like Firefall, and talk to Mark Kern, he's just like, ask me whatever you want. I don't know. I'll it, answer yeah, whatever I you mean, want. He's just, he's just like, I'll answer anything. If I don't have an answer, I'll tell you I don't have an answer. Like, he's, like it's so vastly different to see some developers just being so transparent at this point, and they get it. Like, those guys just get it. I don't know. I just, yeah. to me, two or three questions for every class per month uh, seems completely acceptable and doable by a company of this size. I don't know why I players have to wait months can, can, or weeks. Um, to be perfectly honest, I think it's a little bit of a safety net for the community team and the the dev team. It's because, it, and, uh, and, and, and I don't agree with it by any stretch of imagination. I don't like what they're doing um but basically it's it's a safety net for them oh well uh we don't have to answer that question there because it's not being asked by this person and and it's really what it boils down to or it doesn't it doesn't fall within these it, these guidelines so we don't we don't have to answer we don't feel obligated to even re, we don't feel obligated to respond to these guys uh and it's kind of what it feels like to me it doesn't feel like I would feel better about the situation if the um, representatives were acted more like um, uh, like advisors to say either the community team or the developers instead of <clears throat> in, instead of whatever this is because I think the advisor role fi fi fills a better hole than what what this does this is basically this kind of feels and i've talked about it with some friends and they really feel that it's a uh like a cop-out for the community team and for the developers saying that oh we don't have to we don't, i don't feel obligated to answer this question because it's not being asked by the representative whereas the other way around the representative becomes uh a like they become an advisor to the community team. So the community team or the developers are working on, Hey, so we're working on the Marauders right now. Let's go to the Sentinel and the Marauder representatives and see what they think about this or that. Um, that's not the case here. It's the opposite way. It's we are going to the devs. And so the devs are, it, it just basically it funnels everything. And it, I don't think is it is, as transparent as you were saying it makes Talk about it those reps too the, the re they they actually had a proper poll for each class rep right yeah yes did i win any of them no, no sorry damn i call foul play <laughs> it's rigged um well, do you guys know count. any of the people who look like they're winning right now um i think the polls actually may be closed today do you know any of these people are they well known um one of the guys that was running for the operative representative who's not winning, but he's on our server, and he's a really nice guy. So if anyone out there is not voted, go vote for Maraluka Jedi. Shout there out to go. him. I don't know how much time you got left. Probably not much, but... Probably not much, because it was supposed to end today, so I don't know if they've taken it down yet or not. It seems like but another thing that they were like him. trying to do something like right for the community, but it's just done in such a weird, convoluted, ass-backwards way that it's just going to backfire and piss people off. Instead of just doing it the normal way and just, you know, like you said, having some representatives help like advise and talk to the team and get some questions answered. It just, it just seems ridiculous. I don't know. They got to do oh, everything. I guess they already announced the winners. Oh, they did. My bad. Oh, okay. Just unfortunate. seems like, it seems like the, I don't know. All right, moving on. I want to talk about the codex. First one, tell you guys about Shutterstock. So glad to have these guys on board as our sponsors for the Republic and for Game Breaker TV. If you guys have not checked out Shutterstock, if you guys have a website, blog, I'm sure you have a YouTube page, right? Everybody has a YouTube page. Posting up your videos. You definitely, definitely, definitely want to make your YouTube page look awesome. It will keep people there. It will get more traction. It will get more people to think that you're just, you know, know that you're professional. You're serious about your page or your guild website. Uh, you need custom artwork, anything like that. Here's a... Uh, YouTube page that we launched recently called Super Mega Awesome Time. This is uh, me and Mike Schaff doing some Let's Play videos. A bunch of different stuff. You can check it out. YouTube.com slash Super Mega Awesome Time. Uh, but we wanted to find some little characters and we wanted some to represent the two of us instead of posting our faces on there because nobody wants to look at our ugly mugs. So we went over to Shutterstock and we looked up sure, some, uh, some vector artwork and I found these 
cool little guys. I mean, I mean, they've, they've got stock footage, vector artwork, photography, icons, all the little, little, little things that you're, all the big things and the little things that you would need to make a great website or a project or a video. Maybe you need to spruce up your video. You want like animated things like this lower third. They got stuff like that. Just go over to shutterstock.com, sign up, make an account, start searching for stuff. Uh, I'm going to save you guys 30% off. All you got to do is use the promo code GAMEBREAKER7. That's it. Just make sure you use the, go, uh, the promo code GAMEBREAKER7. You're going to save 30% off on your Shutterstock account, which is an awesome deal. Use Shutterstock every day here at GAMEBREAKER. All right, let's talk about the Codex. So BioWare's uh, Amber Green responded in a thread talking about the Codex and how they've been cleaning it up and correcting it over the last few patches. Uh, fill me in. What, what, what exactly is or was wrong with the Codex? The, some of the Datacrons were not showing up for the correct planet. Um, specifically, Macad Datacrons were showing mm -hmm. up under Alderan. And so when people were going to try to do their Datacron collection, they would still say that they were missing datacrons when in fact they were not and things like uh if they had gotten the the macad datacrons that suddenly they just couldn't even find it in their in their codex at all it's like vanished what how, how's the codex been going i mean it was this was like a fairly hyped pretty big deal pre-launch um very much taken from mass effect i mean has it been a worthwhile part of the game for either of you no yeah. So, <laughs> it was just not, wanted well, to be I, different. So I don't have a problem with the data. No, crunch, I don't. But no. I, like, go ahead. Way back months ago, I got really bored and I said, all right, I'm going to go and I am going to complete everything in the codex. I'm going to get all of these entries. And I started going along when I realized that you can't get starting planet quests if you didn't originally start there, like as a sniper, I couldn't go to Korriban and do any of the quests on Korriban. Like I understand I couldn't do the class ones, but anything else, I couldn't do any of them. So I was like, well, that's annoying. And then I started looking to see what I had from Hutta to complete. And one of the basic ones for the agent class um, for the Red Blade, I never got credit for it. And I'm like, how is that possible? Because I completed the quest and yeah. So I was just kind of like, well, this is broken. I'm not going to waste my time. So fair to say quality-wise, not uh, too useful? I was not super impressed. Hmm. I, I, I like it because and um, I, I like it because of the lore that's written in there. Not, not, uh, it, some of it can be used as uh, quick access to certain pieces of information uh, that and I, this is all coming from a role player's perspective. Uh, for for instance, there is a uh, a datacron, or not a datacron, a codex entry on a, on Sith titles, and which, if you go through the history of Star Wars, Star Wars in general, there there are all sorts of Sith titles, and uh, they all kind of uh, they're all over the place as far as w what what means what and where and how this is used when and that sort of thing and so therefore whenever you get a a new era like the old republic era uh it's good to know who some of uh, uh good to know like for instance what the titles are like what what each one of them means and it goes through like it'll say what an acolyte and an apprentice and what a uh, a lord and a darth all mean in this time in this time period and the other things that it does is it, it also gives key figures in this time period as well, which is another another thing that is uh, really good to have on hand. Uh, f for instance, you know, if you don't know who Darth Jadis is, you can look it up and and uh, have that instantly available. And you're like, oh, okay, that guy is uh, one of the Dark Council in charge of the sphere of Imperial intelligence and that sort of thing. Are most people? Do you think most people are just going to Wikipedia? I mean, that's that's kind of the popular spot for a lot of stuff, right? If I need to look something up, I go to Wikipedia. I've never looked in the codex. Interesting. To try to get anything. The only thing I well, ever kept track of it was was for my datacrons. The the one thing about the one thing about uh, Wikipedia that that is not always consistent, and sometimes we, you have to go to the datacron or datacrons the uh, codex to use, is how it applies to that specific time period, um, because there's certain things. 
like, uh, you know, the way uh, I, I keep going back to the way the Sith are, are like the way the Sith are brought through the trials. Why is there no because, uh, for instance, if you go to Wikipedia, there's all, all sorts of things about uh, Darth Darth's killing or to rise up to a Darth, you got to kill your master. You got to do all sorts of things like this, like the rule of two and those kinds of things, which don't exist during this time period. They're different. Uh, and so the codex entries help assist in that sort of thing uh, and how the, you know, the Imperial military works and that's, and just little, little nuances that are, that are helpful that uh, Wikipedia, unfortunately is going to be rather vague about. All right, next up we got patch notes, patch notes, patch notes, massive, massive patch notes to talk about. Check this out. I love this one. This one's hilarious. In-game customer support tickets are now limited to 1,610 characters. Oh, snap. I kind of feel like this is due to people writing novels and basically just trolling the shit out of them. Well, that's their own fault. They say when you write a ticket that you should include as much information as possible. That's right. Hey, there you go. So you only got 1,610 uh, characters to troll now. Uh, jumping without a weapon drawn will now animate properly after using a vehicle. What happened before? Did it, did you fly? No, you, you were jumping like, you... like you were holding your weapon. So you looked kind of ridiculous because you weren't actually holding your weapon. It was, it was really, really funny. Uh, my Marauder would always <laughs> jump like this. <laughs> All the time. Instead of, instead of the normal, just Hopping up and down. Look at my sabers that I'm not holding. Well fixed. Yeah, uh, the Revan Zayer title has been added to the uh, collections UI. Wasn't this title added like a long time ago? Why isn't wasn't this added straight away? Was this just an oversight or what happened here? The it, it was in collections. I think it was in the wrong place initially, um, and it also didn't have a picture. Now it has a picture. So it didn't have a name. And it's in a, did it not have a name either? Okay, it didn't I got have a name I, either. It was just a blank thing. Yeah. When you clicked on it, it said something else. <laughs> right. So, yeah, now it's... Yeah, it was awesome. It Good job. Uh, the Unify to Chest Piece option now functions properly for die modules with only one primarily, primary color. What did, what did it do before? Did it... You know what? I haven't actually run into that situation. I thought it was okay. Is all, but then at the same time, everything that I use has two colors. Um, yeah, I I'm, I I'm, I'm thinking that it, if if I remember correctly, it didn't it it, it didn't carry through. Like it, it would carry the original color that was in the primary slot instead of the uh, the the dye color. So and it, finally, like, the best patch note ever, ever. Human male characters with head option 22 no longer feel pretty and now wear oh. the male versions of all <laughs> equipped gear. Oh. Best one ever. Additionally, when equipping some of the more revealing outfits, their legs will uh, display the proper texture. So there you go. Good to know. I am disappointed. Totally oh, that means you can't wear that slave bikini anymore. That's right. Damn. <laughs> Larry Aaron, follow totally him on the Twitter, Shadow S H A D D O E. And of course, go over to massively.com and read the hyperspace beacon that is Larry's column over there at Massively each and every week on Star Wars The Older Public. Do not miss it. Do not miss it. Do not miss it. Uh, Laura Williams, you can follow her at Void Minx or on the Twitter, V O I D M Y N X. And of course, right here on Zitter Public every Monday at 6 PST. We're not going anywhere. Uh, I do have to do a quick shout out because people have been asking about the Game Breaker Nation. Uh, it is still coming, it is being uh, worked on as we speak. Stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. Lots of meetings going on, lots of cool stuff going on. It is coming. And also, a brand new site going to be launched. <laughs> xivnation.com it is coming as well if you guys are final fantasy xiv fans waiting for that stay tuned xiv nation is coming you can follow me at gary again and follow game breaker tv game breaker tv and of course we do the show live every single monday at 6 pst so come on over for the live show it's a good time stay vegan stay good stay fit